that this God thing is real, that the power of Holy Spirit and what we teach and preach is true. Just hang around for a little bit. Just hang around for a little bit. Amen. God proves himself of himself. Isn't that awesome? He don't have to go outside of his word for validation of who he is. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for every soul under the sound of my voice this morning. That would get out on a 16 degree Sunday morning to come and be in the presence of the living God. That would come to worship at the altar and at the foot of the cross. Father, I always know when you're working because you confirm your word. That's who you are. You've never once left me hanging and you've done it again this morning. So I praise your holy name for who you are and for what you do and when you do it and how you do it. That's who you are, God. You are the way maker. The promise keeper. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for your presence that's here. God lets your word do what you designed it and spoke it to do. And that is to go forth like a hammer and break the rocks off your head. In Jesus' mighty name and all blessed on the rock said. Amen and amen. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in the house of the Lord. Amen. We got some new folks here to have a few minutes to shake hands and say hello. I said, now listen, let me preface this. Don't let me scare you off today. How many of you know we serve a supernatural God? Come on. Amen. Listen, it's so easy to go into church and we go through the motions. Well, we got to Sunday school. We sing a few hymns. And we never remember to ask for the Holy Spirit to be here. You know what? You want to invite the presence of God in. Guys, I don't want to go to a church where the presence of the Lord isn't there. Amen. 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 I heard the great man of God, Reinhard Bonnke, preaching. He said, let me tell you what. I believe a dead church may be a sin. That's right. What do you mean, preacher? We serve a supernatural, real God who was and is. Sent Jesus to die for you and me. They killed him, put him in the ground for three days, but death couldn't hold him. And we're going to come and sit in church. <laughs> Listen to me. You know what the danger of that is? Non believers come in because the Spirit of the Lord's finally drawn them when they see this. That's not the God you serve. The house of the Lord is to be a little bit loud. We got something to preach about, something to shout about. Amen. Hey. <laughs> and when you're a Bengal fan, there's more tears really than there is celebration. <laughs> but guess what? When I go with my family to watch or watch and eat, eat sandwiches and watch football, we get pretty loud and pretty loud. Yeah. It ain't at the altar of the NFL. It's that I'm hanging out with my family. And there's love in the room and unity in the room. But when we come to the house of God, you know what? Turn it up. Turn it up. Amen. Amen. I told our, our, our new folks this morning, I said, hey, we, we get a little bit loud in praise and worship. They said, praise God, we love you. So they're in the right place, amen. Now, we left off in Daniel 4, 32 and 33. By the way, let me clear up some confusion. We showed some pictures of Bigfoot last week. I don't want anybody to leave a blessing on the rock and go, and then he tried to convince us Bigfoot was real. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm trying to show you that maybe there's things in this earth that we don't fully understand. Yeah. We serve a supernatural God. You know what? I can't stand it when science wants to act like they know everything. Right. I've got news for you, Captain. They don't. The God I serve said, I'll take the simple things that confound the wise. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So you stuck with us last week. We're going to jump back into this thing again. And I want to preface it with this and remind you. We're not wackadoo. We are not outside the written word of, of God. We are in the truth of His word. He is supernatural. Therefore, some of it sounds like, man, are you serious? 
When we left the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 23, we were talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. Anybody heard of him? Yeah. Saddam Hussein tried to tell us that he was the reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar. He had a very similar end, ironically. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was the emperor of the Babylonian Empire. He was the man. He would not listen and heed the voice of the Lord. God's a sovereign God. And let me clear this up. He don't need to ask you. He don't need to ask me. He didn't need to ask Nebuchadnezzar. He said, thus saith the Lord, and you're either going to line up or you're not. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's pick it back up, and I'm just going to brush through this so we'll remember where we're at. 32 is the prophecy that God says is going to happen. 33 is the familiar. You will be driven away from people and will live, like, live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like an ox. Seven times will pass for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is what? <coughs> the government and the rulers of this earth need to be reminded from the pulpit by the carriers of the truth of the Word of God that He is sovereign. Amen. 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 Over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone He would. Wishes. He wishes, baby. It's all His. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of the heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. We were, we were talking, by the way, we're very family oriented here. We talk to each other. Yeah. Yep. This is a question and answer thing. It's just us and Jesus. Amen? Right. If you were driving home from church and you seen a man covered in feathers like an eagle with claws like this, you'd go, hey, guess what I saw him way home? Oh, you did? Uh, what, uh, how'd church go this morning? <laughs> right? Guys, that's the supernatural God that we serve. Whoop, let me not get ahead of myself. Why is this, why is this such a big deal? Our God can take a king and put him on his knees, drive him to the field like a beast because the government leaders or kings or queens may have earthly authority. Our God has sovereign authority that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's power. Amen? You think he got that man's attention? I'll bet he did. So how did it work out with this old man God? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah. Feathers. Eating grass in the field. Now here's my question, and I'm asking you to respond with me. When I say, do you believe this, I want you to give me a solid yes or no. Do you believe what the Bible just said? Yeah. Yes. Praise God. We're all together then. Guys, how are you going to preach and teach and believe in a supernatural God? And when the world comes to you, if you don't address these things. See, the world's got the alien agenda they're pushing at you. Right? Can I tell you what that whole thing is summed up by Minnesotans? Anybody ever seen the program Ancient Aliens? Yeah. Yeah. One person seen Ancient Aliens. Nobody else. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> this program has been on for years. And they have set out to convince the people of this earth of one thing. The Word of God isn't what it says it is. God isn't who He says He is. And that you and I are just accidents or seated by aliens. Thank you very much. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Liar, 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 pants on fire. <laughs> you know what the scary part is? It wasn't on for a month. It failed. They got special editions. Inside editions of the program. And it continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But for the body of Christ who knows the truth of God's word, this is no surprise to us. Jesus said it's coming. Be you not deceived. He opened and he closed with it. If you with me, say amen. amen. We're going to go a little bit further. Just stay with me here, church. I've got some audio that we're going to pump up. I don't promote anything from this pulpit. Chad, what name would be here this morning? We're listening to a book review called Dead Men's Secrets. We're going to take a quick excerpt from it today. The man that's doing the book review is, by his own words, an atheist. He doesn't believe what we believe. But you know what? He's smart enough to look at the Word of God and know what it is. But he gave me a quote that stuck with me, and I'll never forget it. And I want you to hear my heart, and I want you to hear what the atheists think about you and I. Are you ready? Reach down, just buckle in your spiritual seatbelt. Okay? Don't, don't blow out on me. 
He said, you know why people aren't quick to jump on your Christian bandwagon? Because those of you who own Bibles won't read them. Amen. Yep. And those of you who do don't believe a word it says. Genesis 6, 1 through 4. This is as science fiction as it gets, guys, but it's the word of God. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, or angels, saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed what? Flesh. Flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Go back one second. There were giants on the earth in those days. Yeah. If you go to your school professor college and say, you know, there's the word of God it says there were giants. He goes, well, there wasn't. It's all mixed up fables. That isn't true. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Guys, that's crazy stuff. It is telling you that angels, the ones that were one third that were kicked out with Satan, came and they took human wives. And apparently, according to the scripture, they made and bred these things called the Nephilim. It was making giants in the earth. Are you with me? Yeah. Pastor, I ain't never heard this. This is crazy. Read your Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Read your Bible. Amen? Read it. Now, it's real neat, preacher, but where are we going? Giants. If there were giants, where were the bones? Why don't we just say, if there were giants in the land, Miss Minnie, then there were giants in the land. The scholars will tell you that there isn't. Did you know in 1940 in Chicago at the Museum of Natural History, you could walk in and see that they had a 14-foot skeleton of a human being for all to see? You can't go today and see it because it's gone. Because it doesn't fit with the theory of evolution where they're trying to sell to you and me and to our children. Here's what evolution yep. says. You really don't matter in this earth. You crawled out of the ocean as a piece of protoplasm. The word of God says that you are made in the image of God. And you are precious unto him. He knows your heart. Every hair on your head. Amen. Praise God. We got new faces in the room today. Would you just do this, everybody? Oh, preacher, we've done this before. But I want you to understand the weight of it. That thumbprint, you're the only one in the world with it. There's nobody else like you. There's nobody else like Dennis Owens. It's almost like God knows what he's doing. Amen? Come on. You are a unique creation. You are one of one and you are special. Yeah. Can we just give yourself a call? Yeah. You are precious to our call. Can we go a little further? Oh, yeah. Listen, to take the bones that we knew were there years ago, that's not science and it's not academic. It's an agenda to protect, are you ready? The religion of evolution. Now, I think you meant the science. I mean religion. Yeah. They protect it. Yeah. It's propaganda. See, if it doesn't fit your theory, you destroy it or remove it. I said if there were giants, let's just say there were giants, and that'd be the truth. You ever heard the name Goliath? Yeah. yeah. Is that in the Bible? Yeah. yeah. Do you believe it or not? Yeah. It's called evidence, isn't it? Listen to this. The Bible tells us Goliath, who in comparison to the other giants described in the Bible, was a midget. We're not talking about a few large men that were anomalous in size. They've been discovered by the thousands. Listen to this. James is not here. Darren, you're a general contractor. <clears throat> if you are going to build something, don't you need tools that are equal to the task? Yeah. Stan B, you haul lumber, correct? Why would you put way more weight on your trailer than what's allowed? It's not going to get you there. It's bad for your equipment. It's safe for everybody. Unsafe for everybody. You're with me? So who cares? Listen to this. There is a block of rock in Ecuador, perfectly quarried with precise measurements, square and rectangular, ready to place, that weighs 200,000 tons. Ooh, that's big. Can I tell you how big it is? Ever heard of the Titanic? The Titanic weighed 40,000 tons. 
When the Bible tells you that there were giants in the earth those days, you better believe it was true. There's evidence sitting right there. Why would a man, by the way, how'd you quarry that? Can we go a little further? Now, I'm just trying to give you relevance to what the Word of God is saying. You with me? Do you think there's a crane anywhere in the world that can go pick up 200,000 tons and move it where you want to put it? Got news for you, kids, it doesn't exist. They were smarter then than we are now. And the evidence we see. How about the pyramids? I'm going to get off in a rabbit hole there. Let's stay with what I've got. But listen, there is evidence to lay out there that the Word of God... By the way, do you think Adam was a knuckle dragon? <laughs> Made in the image of God. First copy of the king. Buddy, he was a hard download. Amen? Amen? But they want you and I to think that we've somehow developed for monkeys, but we're getting smarter and we're going to space. We're taking over things. No, we're not. We've yet to discover things that they knew back then. 500 years ago, if we sit down and look at the technology we've got, by the way, who's got Wi Fi? Yeah. That's not crazy at all. Here's a cable that comes into a box and gives you video and audio for everyone connected to your house. 500 years ago, they'd have called that magic. Yeah. We know it as technology. Adam and Eve had 1,695 years before the flood came. What do you think they accomplished? Nothing. Hmm? Let's go ahead and play this video real quick. Listen, I ask that you hear what this gentleman is saying and understand the weight and the gravity of it, if you would. Get those lights, Jethro. Now, more than any document, the Bible has been assailed as a collection of fanciful myths. And yet, to the embarrassment of its critics, archaeological discoveries have proved time and time again that the fabled cities, mythical persons, and impossible events were not only true, but they were, in fact, reliable historical reporting in every detail. And indeed, and indeed, the Bible can now be regarded as the most accurate and the most trustworthy source of history that we possess. That man's an atheist. And he said, here's what historical studies have shown us. The Bible's the only document that we've got that's got the truth in it. It's historically accurate. And every time we try to disprove it, the Word of God comes true in church, especially not this hour in the earth. If not us, who? Come on. Come on. Oh, that was really quiet. If not us, <laughs> well, we're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus, but we're just going to ignore the media and what's going on. Put our heads in the sand. You know what happens when the church doesn't address something? The world does. There's a slippery slope, church. Amen? Okay. Do you believe that or not? We serve a supernatural God from beginning to end, but He does not fit into man's box. He does the impossible for breakfast. He parts seas. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, that God miraculously opened it? Yes. Same thing on his story. His story. Oh, did you hear that? There's a difference between history and his story. Yeah. Come on. Come on. What they're trying to sell you is his story. Yeah. Same thing on the history channel the other day. Well, we're going to explain the biblical crossing of the Red Sea. No, you're not. No. Well, now, Miss Bean, we predict that if we go to the most shallow section, about 30 feet from the shore, and the wind blew at 96 miles an hour, they would part the. The Bible says God parted the sea when he stretched out his staff. And it said that they walked through on dry ground. Science can't do it, so therefore it didn't happen. It's the truth of the word of God. Amen? That's supernatural, church. Well, we got way off track there. And reel it back in. Did you know the word of God said that he rolls up the heavens like a scroll? Just rolls it up. That was a good image. Now, let's go a little further. Anybody ever heard of heaven? Can you show it to somebody? 
Can you can't show it to them? Do you believe in it? Yeah. Does the Bible say it exists? Yeah. Here we go back in the supernatural, right? What does the word of God, and we could have went for a week on this, all right? Let me just touch what the Lord laid on my heart. Revelation 21, 21 through 23. Let's see science do this with this. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. See, we think we've seen pure gold here, right? Comes a little yellow block, they keep it at Fort Knox. Wah, wah, wah. There's a joke in there. The gold was so pure it says like transparent glass. Oh, glory to God. Dennis, here's the power of his word. Here's something that will make you stand up and shout, believer. But I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need for sun and the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is light. Amen. Speaking of light, Frank, we love science, don't we? I do. You know what real science does? It proves God. Rocky, it sure does. Let me touch on this and we'll move on. Do you know we don't even know what light is? We've got absolutely no clue. See, Dennis, I can't take a sample and put it on a microscope. Go to the old textbook and put it on and say, well, it's made of this, that, and the other. We have no idea. Watch this. In the third, let me just tell you. In Genesis chapter 1-3, it says the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over the earth and it was covered with darkness. God said, let there be light and there was. You know what we miss? It wasn't until about six verses later when he created the sun. It was the glory of God that illuminated the place. How about that? Amen? We don't even know what it is. 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4. Y'all ever heard of the Apostle Paul? Said before, Paul's that guy that kind of frustrates us as a believer. Like, man, this dude always had it together. He always had the right answer. Right? Listen, Paul. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, by the way, it's him. But he's so humble, he won't say, look at here. Humility and obedience will take you further with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Two things. Yep. Humility and obedience. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. First heaven, air you're breathing. Sky, second heaven. But above that, third heaven. This is where God exists. Wherever it was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I don't know. But God knows. Was caught up to paradise. And heard inexpressible things that no one is permitted to tell. Huh? Now let's go just a little bit further. But he was real good at dropping clues. Praise God. Listen to this. Go to that next verse if you would. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. However, as it is written... What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. This earth has nothing, nothing to offer you, child of God, worth missing heaven. Uh, yep. Oh, but I don't know. I've seen lifestyles of rich and famous. they got some real nice places. <laughs> Streets of gold so pure you can see through them. Oh, you know what's going to make heaven heaven without any structures? Being in the presence of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to give my Savior a hand. I love him. He's amazing. We're going to glorify him. Amen. Uh-oh. The atheist quote, what we just heard. Nobody wants to join the Christian bandwagon because those of you who own Bibles don't read them. You know how we know that, Owens? We read heart statistics last week, and it was a bitter pill. 48% yep. of this country will pick up their Bible and read Scripture. Only 
actually believe that Jesus is who he says he is. You can read the word all day. You can know it better than me. You can know it better than the devil. You can know it better than academia. But if you don't believe that Jesus is the risen son of God, confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. You can miss the whole part of the gospel. Yeah. Too much? Hmm. We serve a supernatural God who does supernatural things that the world wants to water down. Are you ready? Or just dismiss it altogether? Constantly trying to delegitimize the Bible to give an answer for creation the supernatural power. Any other answer than thus saith the Lord. A couple weeks ago I was preaching. Let me tell you what this whole thing is about. From the time Satan was booted out like lightning to where we sit in this church today, people don't want to be told no. If God created it, Marietta, he's got the right to judge it. People don't like that so much. It's the truth. If you know it, say amen. amen. A time is coming, and I believe that time is now, that the church better have an understanding for answers and answers for verses like this. Let's go to Luke 21, 25 through 27. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. You better catch this one. People will faint from terror. You ever been scared? You ever been so scared that you lost your breath and just blacked out? People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken at that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And we talked about this last week. Jesus said, when they see me, they're going to weep. But not for us. We're going to rejoice. I told you I got my shirt that says, told you so. The King of Kings is coming back, church. And all of this shenanigans we're trying to convince people. Over. Over. It's soon. It's going to be soon. Can I tell you why we're preaching this way today and last week? Church, if we don't address it as the body of Christ through the lens of the gospel, Amen. the world's going to try and sell you and your kids' answers. You better have a biblical foundation and the Holy Ghost to lead you into all truth. Amen? Amen. Those things which are coming on the earth. Do you know how many shows and books and magazines are geared towards UFOs? And now we've got fancy with UAPs. Used to be unidentified flying. Now it's unidentified aerial phenomena. We showed some clips last week. We don't know what it is. We discussed, we've never seen a time when the government came out on 60 minutes and said, well, we're not alone. Did anybody ever think you would see that time? The Bible said it was coming, and we're living in it. It's going to be soon, Bill, and we better address it. Amen? Amen. By the way, we're not talking about little green men from Mars. I want to be clear on that. There is God. There is Jesus. There is the Holy Spirit. There is Lucifer, his fallen angels, and God's created angels. Demons and unclean spirits, everything else derives from one of the above. But Jesus has got authority over all. That's why he said, fear not, Dennis. I've overcome the world. We're going to be good. Who, uh, Teresa, praise God. I want you to know I'm in on what you said. That we plead the blood over our house and over this church. And Satan can dance around it, but he can't cross the blood line. Amen. Oh, boy. It always seems to happen at Blessing on the Rock that it comes to that slightly controversial part of the, of, the, uh, of the sermon. But you know what? God called me to preach the truth. And when you shine the light of the gospel and the truth on things, it ain't so spooky anymore. Our friends at the powers that be at the Catholic Church, they've always got an answer for you. I'll go ahead and say it. I'm not scared. It's rarely scriptural. No. The Vatican scientist says belief in God and aliens is okay. Well, thank goodness. Vatican City. The Vatican's chief astronomer said there is no conflict between believing in God and the possibility of extraterrestrial brothers. 
perhaps more evolved than humans. Let me just stop right there. You know what they're really saying? Jesus doesn't matter. You're not the apple of God's eye. Everything in this book doesn't pertain to you and the Son of God living to be exactly who it was. It can just apply to anybody. Do you understand that totally dismisses the blood of Jesus? Yeah. Stay with me. If you get offended, stick around. It'll happen again. He said, in my opinion, this possibility of life on another planet exists. By the way, you know what the name of the telescope is sitting out there in the desert? Lucifer. <sighs> Mm. You'll have you're not plugged into the matrix, are you, John? <laughs> they call it Lucifer. What are you out of names? You couldn't have said Lucifer. Timothy <laughs> Lucifer. Come, on, church. Forty-five-year-old Jesuit priest, who is the head of the Vatican Observatory and a scientific advisor to the Pope. Let me go ahead and tell you, get a new advisor. Let me say that. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. How can we exclude that life has developed elsewhere? He told the Vatican newspaper and observatory in an interview Tuesday and Wednesday edition, explaining that the large number of galaxies with their own planets made this possible. Asked if he was referring to beings similar to humans or even more evolved than humans, he said, certainly in a universe this big, you can't exclude this hypothesis. I'm going to say it again. Church, Jesus, God, Holy Ghost, angels, fallen angels, demons, Satan, and humans. Everything is derived from one of the above. Oh, Richmond, are you sure? Y'all ever heard of Jesus? He said there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. I'm glad to say everybody stayed for that. We're going to move on now. Come on. Come on, Uh-oh. Remember that old song by Poison? Give me something to believe in. Nobody, I'm the only one that's ever heard of it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I don't listen to secular music, preacher. No, okay. it's all right. I told y'all before, God speaks through what he wants to, when he wants to, and he don't need your permission. Amen. 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 The world is so desperately looking for something more than their everyday existence to believe in. Why do you think the entertainment industry is so focused on heroes? Oh, we need a hero. I need a hero. <laughs> They're trying to replace Jesus with all these superheroes. superheroes. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. The supernatural. Comics, books, movies, all focus on heroes. A hero with superpowers that can overcome any circumstance. Somebody name me a superhero. Anybody. Come on. Spider-Man. Who? Spider-Man. There's a good one. Anybody else? Deadpool. Who? Deadpool. Anybody else? Captain America. Captain America. They've got that character on the downhill slide, don't they? I'm not even going to go into that today, church. Listen to them. Oh, wait. If you're superheroes, if my power's not good enough, I'm just going to join up with the Green Lantern or whoever else. Y'all with me? Listen to this. And if the battle's too much, the hero can bind with other heroes with similar superpowers, and all evil will be overcome. Y'all ever heard of Marvel? Yeah. DC? Yeah. The Avengers? Yeah. Justice League? Yeah. Listen to this. Church, our Savior has all power and all authority. What happens when his people come together? Dennis, I knew God was moving when you said about the word of God being like a rock. And then you said when two or more are gathered. Let's talk about real superpower, Teresa. How about that? Come on. What happens when we as God's people come together? Go to Matthew 18, 18 through 20. This is Jesus talking. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Amen. I don't know how many folks are sitting underneath the sound of my voice, but that word said that Jesus is somewhere sitting in here with us. Amen. 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 Supernatural. But I can't see you, Pastor. Hang around. Oh, are you ready? How much Jesus do you want? Yeah. All of them. All of them. Goodness, yeah. amen. Yeah. Amen. Can I go further? Yeah. Y'all ever heard of Superman? Yeah. Leaps 
these buildings in a single bound, faster than a speeding bullet. Superman's been around for a long time, Marietta, right? There was a comic book, the Superman comic book line that came out in 1992 called The Death of Superman. Anybody ever seen that? Yeah. My man. The Death of Superman. You wouldn't think that people would take a comic book seriously. They did. What if I told you that generated $30 million in a day? One day, the death of Superman. This issue brought a total of $30 million during its first day on sale, and ultimately more than 6 million copies were sold, making it the best-selling comic in 1992. Y'all ever heard of Marvel? Marvel. DC, Justice League, The Avengers. I'm going to name some of y'all didn't get. Superman, Batman, Aquaman. Wonder Woman, thank you. We don't want to leave women out. <laughs> Green Lantern, Captain America, Thor, Spider-Man. Preacher, if you come up to waste my time without comic books, I'm getting upset. Stay with me. You ready? If these characters were real, I promise you the world would worship them because of their power. Do you know how much Netflix is geared solely towards the occult? Church, it's staggering. How many shows is there on DirecTV about witches? The occult and supernatural power. Yeah, many. Ooh, if you know the devil's a liar, say amen. 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 If there's a superpower, the world has a Hollywood hero who wields it. But you, children of God, wield the power of the truth that is Jesus Christ. The power to loose, the power to bind, the power to love people and see their lives turned around and set free through the blood of Jesus. If the world wants real power, hang around. You don't see it when every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Tell you something. This is way outside the box. The Bible says that the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit is yet to come. Yeah. If I did not know and believe in my heart of hearts and have the prophetic word of the Lord on our side, then it's going to happen right here in and amongst us. I'd have already left. Amen. 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 Yes. The greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost is yet to come. Church, you know how big the book of Acts was? You're going to see bigger. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Jesus said all things, all these things will you do and greater. greater. Mm. He's not saying greater than what he done. That's impossible. He's talking about it all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you what, Pastor. I'm going to have to say it to believe it. I want to remind you God's okay with that. He's not like, well, I tell you what, I saw Todd's faith would come right along. Holding things up. No, you're not. You ain't holding up God, Dennis. That day has been set in stone, and it's in God's time, and you'll learn it is coming. But listen to this. Some folks need to see to believe. You know who said that? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's go to John 4, 46 through 53. No, I... I'm not trying to sell you. I'm going to tell you about my personal walk. The more I get into this word and find out who the person of Jesus and the person of the Holy Spirit is, the more in love I am. Yes. Church, yes. he's the only hope yep. that we've got, yes. and he's more than enough. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Once more, he visited Canaan in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. Is that supernatural? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come. Let me tell you something. If you got the relationship with the Lord Jesus, you ain't got to beg him for nothing. Oh, right. Amen. How many of you moms or dads, when your kid comes to you, there ain't nothing in this world you wouldn't do for him? That's right. yeah, sure. Do you know how proud God is when you'll take time like you said to him say, Hey, Dad, yeah. I'm broken right here. I don't have the answers. I ain't got the money. I don't know what to do. The world can't seem to fix it. But I trust you, Father. And I come to you, Father. And he goes, man, that's called faith. There is none like your God. And by adoption, we are able to call him Abba, Daddy, Father. Boy, if you'll get that in your spirit, every time you go to pray, remember, you're going to your Father. Amen, Bill? Amen. 
and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied. How about that, Anthony? Wait, Jesus, I don't think you heard me. I said, my kid's dying. Won't you come with me? Jesus said, how about you go? And your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at 1 in the afternoon, the fever left him. Let me tell you, if you've been praying in the midnight hour, if you've been fasting and just holding on for deliverance, don't give up because you haven't seen it yet today. Hold on. It's right on the brink of breakthrough that the devil wants to break you before God manifests and shows up. Yeah. Amen. Then the father realized it was the exact time which Jesus had said to him, your son will live so he and his whole household believed. I am no Rhodes Scholar, that's obvious. Not a lot of those come from Glenwood. Let me do that. <laughs> do you know why it's going to be the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost ever in our time? Because the world is so misled, right. so confused, misinformed and desensitized, it's going to take a move of the Holy Ghost that they'll never forget. Right. But it's going to draw people to God's to God. They hear me. Come on. Before sitting up here, somebody said, Well, I thought you'd like to have this lady. We anoint it, and you guys begin to pray and believe, and God begins to grow that thing out. Do you understand that happens? Yep. Yeah. Church, it happens. That's right. Well, that sounds impossible. It is impossible. It's supernatural, but with our God, all things are possible. Well, when that lady yeah. grows out, you see that dude run down to him, he's going to tell somebody. Yeah. And they're going to show up. Billy Thompson, am I wrong? They're going to show up to see the power of God. Guess what? And he delivers every time. He's been delivering since Genesis all the way through to Revelations. From the cross into eternity, he's a supernatural God. Come on. Amen. It's an old issue that people need to see to believe. Watch this. People need to see to believe. Amen. We are reading from the B-I-B-L-E. I heard a man use that as an acronym. He said, it's basic instructions before leaving earth. You better know what the instruction book says. If you buy a new Ford or Chevy truck, it comes with a little thing called an instruction manual. When they tell you to change the oil, you're going to need to change the oil. If it says put 18-inch tires and you try to skip out some 14-inch tires, you're going to have trouble. The Bible is the instructions for obeying. My daddy used to say it's the road. And if you're going to get to where it leads, you're going to have to follow. Amen. 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 By the way, I know people come for that kind of deep thinking right there. <laughs> Listen to this. It's the inerrant, holy word of God. It's an account of people who have seen, people who were there and were willing to die for its integrity. People have seen, and that's why they believe. But I'm asking you today in the house of the Lord, do you believe? Amen. Oh, come on, man. Do you believe what this Bible says? Amen. Our God is no fable. He's no superhero. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He created all that you see. Yeah. You ready? By His Word. He created it by His Word. He created mankind from the dust. And one day He's going to judge us. Can I keep going? Yeah. He raises the dead. He's immortal. He's righteous. He's holy and set apart. He can more than see the future. He writes the future. He exists outside of time, and there is none like him. He is our supernatural, all-powerful, death-defying Savior. He is God in God. Amen. Listen to this. I hope this touches your heart. And that in your time of need and distress and confusion, the Holy Spirit reminds you of the truth of the word that is planted in you today. That's my prayer over you. Are you ready? 
He loves us more than we can fathom. All right. All right. I don't think we'd hit a church. I know we don't. So much that he would give his life to redeem us. Y'all are going to get tired of me saying it to you, but I need to punch you right in the face with the truth. Moms and dads, grandpas and grandpas, where you at? Grandma? I got a little boy named Neo. At 46, God said, you need one more. You know what? I had no banks to carry on the bloodline. God gave me one at 46 years old, and he is precious. And if you think I would send Neo to a cross to be nailed and pierced and beaten before the center of the world for you, you've lost your minds. Yep. But God said, I'm going to send mine for you. It's a love you can't fathom. You can't process it because it's supernatural. It doesn't make sense. It tilts over the scales. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Listen to this. What are God's superpowers? All of them, and more than you can ask, think or imagine. Amen. That's our God's superpowers. It's the ability to love us. Are you ready? Unconditionally. Yeah. The church has lost that unique gift for a long time. You need to speak a certain way, smell a certain way, dress a certain way, be holy enough, not for God, but for us. Don't you wear your hat in this church that displeases God. God looks at the heart of man. Amen. There was a church right here locally. Me and Dee was talking about it. Dude comes in with sleeve tattoos. But he's carrying his son and his two daughters and his precious wife. How long do you think it took the Holy Ghost to draw that man? We don't know, but Jesus does. That's right. But walking up the steps, the pastor spins you around and goes, It's reasons like that you'll never see him. Oh, come on. See, Jesus went to the cross to pay the price for that man. Yeah. But you and your religion cut him off before he ever got him to go. Yep. Oh, That's why y'all see these fancy shoes? This wallet on this chain and old shirt. I ain't nothing. I've never been anything. But I know Jesus. Yeah. And I want to express his love and who he is to guys like me and Todd Savior. And me and Johnny Street get us so Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's who Jesus is, yes. Larry. Yes. Here comes your word to leave on today. Is if you get some praise and worship, praise and worship going, please. The ability to love us unconditionally. Here it is. It is not church that we have accepted Jesus. Is that Jesus has accepted us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You need to let that sit in for a minute. It's not that we've accepted Jesus. You can ask for forgiveness all day, but if God rejects you, you're done. Guess what? You can't be good enough to not, not cuss enough, or not smoke enough, or not drink enough. To be good enough for God. He finds you right where you're at in the midst of your confusion and misery. That's the God we serve. Amen. Let me tell you something. I've said it before and I'm not embarrassed about it. I am not who I used to be, praise God. Amen. The closest I've ever been to the Lord was on my knees in a jail cell where all the music's turned off. And all the voices have been shut off. And it's just you and your mistakes. And the devil trying to condemn you. But you know what? They make one right choice in these prisons and jails. There's always the word of God available to you. Yeah. People say, well, Pastor, the Lord don't speak to me. When was the last time you opened up your Bible? Put your head in your hand and say, Father, I'm so lost. Speak to me through your word. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Legitimize what God's doing in you. Right. Amen. Yeah. 
Can I give you another tip? Come on. Don't try to compare what God's doing in you to what he's doing in Frank or me. Or in me. You are unique unto yourself. God's for you and he ain't against you. Amen. 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 Dennis said something to me over lunch yesterday. I know it's getting late. We'll fix it again. If you don't know who we are at Blessed in the Rock, we believe that written word of God from cover to cover. Right. cover, to cover. We believe in every move of the Holy Ghost. Oh. He said, let me tell you something. To the world, weird things happen in the spirit of the church. Yeah. But let me tell you, when you serve a supernatural God, what the world calls weird is a normal day. Amen. 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 If there's a need in the house of the Lord today, if you want to wait till this service closes, it's fine. Look for us to come pray with you. I don't care if it's sickness, deliverance, whatever it may be. We do not go through the motions here. You might come to some Sundays and I'm happy to give an altar call. I'm going to do my best to not miss what the Holy Spirit's saying in the moment. But we don't just go through the motions. But I feel like today we're supposed to need prayer. You ain't got to come up and tell me I ain't Jesus. By the way, I believe the Lord would have me share this with you. Care how much you love your husband or you love your wife or your kids? They are not your Jesus. They can't answer your prayers. Don't you try and put them in a place where they can only fail. The best husband's a sorry Jesus. The best of wives is a lousy Jesus. But there's one Jesus who's perfect. Amen. Amen. That's who we bring all the place to. If there's anybody, that's your time to come. Listen, if you don't know Jesus, now's the time. Do not walk out those doors. Preach it. Amen. People will say, you know, when you don't preach the truth like this, Dennis, you're risking a lot. Well, guess what? I've already lost a lot. Yeah. But I've gained a lot, too. Yeah. And I'm going to see this thing through. Yeah. Jesus comes on the clouds. Let them laugh. Let them holler. I don't care. I know 